All right, let's start lesson six, um, which is uh, one D um, foreign transport in homogeneous um, system. And uh, so what I'm going through here is example 6.1. Um, you probably noticed that this um, lesson is very different from the previous ones. In the previous ones, we always talk about the batch reactors, and um, it's a well-mixed system, only reactions, right? We have talked about um, aqueous compaction, mineral dissolution precipitation, surface compaction, and ion exchange so far. And we skip lesson five, which is on redox reaction abiotic. Um, I realized that uh, in this cloud, I don't think there's a lot of interest in um, abiotic redox reactions, so I think we'll skip that. Now this is starting a new unit, which is on physical processes, and we're doing only physical process for this um, unit. So we start with flow and transport with um, homogeneous system 1D, which is simplest you can uh, get. We talk about several different processes. One is advection, um, which is essentially you kind of think about your, um, let's say you are swimming and you kind of go with the flow, you don't do much, uh, very relaxing, you just go. So it's like a solid is go together with the flow at the same speed as the flow, um, and it doesn't do much by itself. Um, so the, the, the advective flux essentially is um, concentration, time, the velocity, and all these things. You can go back and review these uh, equations. And then um, we also talk about diffusion, which is driven by concentration gradient. Um, one example I always like to use about diffusion is imagine you have a cup of clean water you put in a one drop of fruit, fruit dye, and you can see that the that drop become bigger and eventually become homogenized in the water. And so that's driven even you are not doing anything. So this is driven by the differences in concentration in different parts of the uh, of the system. That's diffusion. And then there's also dispersion process. Now, dispersion process is somewhat similar like diffusion, but it's a different course. Because usually you have, you're thinking, we're thinking about pulse media. And in pulse media, you have all these um, pulse structure that is not uniform everywhere. So you could uh, have a solid go through some long pass, some slow pass, and these tortuous pass um, essentially kind of um, leads to spatial variation in um, in different parts of pulse media, and actually that's the overall effect is almost like a diffusion from a larger uh, scale when you look at the system. So essentially what you, we are thinking about is, so typically what's been done is we are lump the diffusion and dispersion process, mechanical dispersion and diffusion, combine them to become hydrodynamic dispersion, which have two terms, one is diffusion, the other is uh, dispersion. And so this is just a quick cap about, recap of what's um, was discussed in this lesson. And here in what I'm going to talk about is the, the having the example set up. Um, and so let's go through the question first and think about it a little bit. Um, here we are, so this example, we're talking about 1D column, 10 centimeter long, and we're injecting a tracer into the system at a concentration of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 4 mole per liter. And you're given permeability, which is 1.75 times 10 to the minus 13 meter square. You have also porosity. Um, it's giving you the Darcy flow velocity of 4.2 times 10 to minus 6, which is actually a meter cube per meter square plus meter per second. Um, and then you also have the molecular diffusion coefficient in water. 
uh, which is 1.8 times 10 to minus 9. Uh, you have a cementation exponent. Uh, you have a dispersivity alpha, all these values. Now, by now, if you have already read the text carefully, you should know what are the use of all these numbers. Now, before we do the, the simulation setting up system, we do need to do some um, quick calculation in terms of what's going on and what are the numbers that are coming through. All right, so here, um, before the numerical experiment, I, I'm asking you to do, first of all, calculate the pressure gradient for the Darcy flow velocity. We talk about um, for the flow, you the system essentially will be follow the calculation will follow Darcy's law and um, the driving force essentially is the pressure gradient. So you need to put in the input file some kind of a pressure gradient, how much a difference in pressure in the two ends of a column in order to give get uh, this Darcy flow, flow velocity that um, I give to you. And then um, the second one, would be calculating the effective diffusion coefficient, DE. Um, mechanical diffusion coefficient, DM, which all have expressions in the, in the, in the text material. Um, and then the hydrodynamic dis dispersion coefficient, DH. And I'm asking what dominant the DH. Um, so the, this is about the di diffusion dispersion process. The first question about the flow velocity. And then the third one is calculate the characteristic time for the vaccine, which is residence time. Um, the resident time essentially kind of characterize, for example, let's say you have one, you have a lot of different so solute particles, thinking about all these trees are going to a system, a lot of different particles, right? So it's the average time scale that one particle stay in the column, right? Some flow fast, some flow is the same, but the diffusion process, so there's some solid go out of system faster than others because of the diffusion dispersion process. The resident time essentially kind of quantifies the average time. Um, and then I also ask you to um, calculate PE number and based on PE number predict which term will dominate during the transfer process. And then at last, uh, it's, it's uh, setting up the, the crunch flow with 100 grid blocks uh, and run the simulation. So suppose that you should be, I'm just going to give you some hint. I don't want to give you the answer. There's answer in the text, online text that you can get um, actually by click on it after you go through this video. But I kind of want you to try the, your first by yourself first, because I, it's always better to try your, yourself first, try your best, and then you um, you compare your answer with the solution. That's that way you learn. You got um, practice, and then you if it's your answer is wrong, you kind of look at differences, and you 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 become understand what went wrong in your calculation, so you know which part you don't understand, or which part you need to pay attention to. So I don't want to give you this answer right now. So suppose we already know the answer. So does it, I, I'm going to tell you first one, your Darcy flow velocity will be calculated from the Darcy's law. And pay attention to the two different flow velocity we talk about in, in the texture material. One is the Darcy flow velocity. The other is linear flow velocity. And um, the reason there are two different flow velocities is that uh, we have pulse media, and pulse media have pulse space, right? It's not everywhere you water can go through, so the water only goes through the pulse space. Um, so the linear flow velocity is essentially the real flow vel velocity that the water goes through in the system. The Darcy flow velocity is what we see uh, after we get, get out, and if you're assuming everything is... Um, kind of all available, um, the, the, the flow velocity we, we see. So you can think about, so they differ by a factor of porosity. And I can tell you that the linear flow velocity is faster than um, 
does it for velocity by a factor of one over velocity. It's too complex to explain. But you should go back and review the equation and all that. In any case, um, let's look at um, the example. So setting up a control example will be the way I see it in a 1D system. We'll be thinking about, first of all, you do these calculations about flow, pressure gradient, um, and um, the different parameters that you need to put in the input file. And then you go through several steps. One is setting up a domain. Right? You need to tell the system how long is your column um, and how, how much resolution you want you want to give it to it. What do you want to do 100 grid blocks or you do want to give it to only 10 grid blocks? And what is your initial and boundary condition? And how fast your flow is going and how fast, what are the transport parameters and all that. So setting up a domain and then setting up flow, setting up transport. And also you want to tell the system in the output keyword uh, grid block how you are going to um, output the, the modding results. Um, we'll be talking a little bit later um, after we talk about um, the, the first three items. All right, so this is our question. So let's go through, let's go to our folder, which I, um, I'm using the blank that as you guys suggested, I started using all this with blank. Um, Let's do the, I prefer using the notepad instead of Word. Okay, so we have the, because this should be lesson six. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, um, let's look at the question again. Let me make it this on the side. And then we have the input file to the other side. Okay, so we have a 10 centimeter. Well, we need to tell the, system, the, the, the code, how much do we have in terms of the, um, the size of a domain, right? And uh, we always need to, you, you, you have some discretization before, it's always for batch reactor, so you have only one grid block and the overall volume of the system. We always need to tell them the distance first, right? So distance units. Would it be, let's say I'm using, okay, let's, this time I'm going to use millimeters. We've used meters before, centimeters before, so let's do millimeters. And you have a 10 centimeter column. So essentially, you, which is 100 millimeters, right? And we want to divide that into 100 grid blocks. That's, that's a, what is the question, 100 grid So that means, you have a hundred grid blocks, and each of them is one millimeter, right? So you you have X zone is a hundred, and each of them is one. That's your domain. That's the length of your domain. But also, you kind of need to tell. What is your um, system, right? What is your chemical system? Now, since you only have tracer going through the system, you would, as a species, a primary species, what do you, what do you have? We talk about this is bromide. We don't have other, any other chemicals. So this would be bromide, right? And we have bromide in the database. So you have bromide. You don't have a second species, so you don't put in any second species. You don't have gas. You don't have anything. Okay, so because it's a column and we are kind of injecting something, flushing something into the column, so you will have inlet, right? Your condition, your inlet condition is essentially what you are injecting. And then um, if it's a sand column, let's say we call it a sand zone or just sand, um, whatever we call it, here I'm calling it sand zone, right? So in the inlet, we are saying that um, the concentration is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 4 more per liter or more per kilogram water. So let's do this. We will be putting the um, primary species, um, the inlet would be, because again, we need to specify units, 
right? So we we'll the code doesn't take more per liter. So this is again relatively clean water. So it you can do more per kilogram water, and then you have um, again we are ten specify temperature just to be explicit. But if you don't specify the code, it will um, use 25 degree as default. So being both inlet and uh, the same zone in the column, you need to specify the primary species. And we said that is 1.2 times 10 to minus 4 more per kilogram water. We don't really need to specify a pH or anything because it's just bromide. Now, what about in the sand zone? Sand zone actually, we probably can copy this, but the we have different temperature. Initially, I'm so sorry, different concentration initially. So, uh, I'm checking to concentration. Okay, it didn't specify what is the initial concentration within the column. Let me just add a little bit of thing here so it's more explicit. Injecting at the concentration, a tracer bromide is injected into the column at the concentration of this. Let's say originally there is no um, bromide in in the column, or initially, to be consistent. OK. So that means your bromide really should be 0, or whatever I use typically is a very low concentration. Right? That's, that's your, con your condition for where you have that inject, what you have injecting into a system, and what you have initially in the column. We also kind of need to tell the uh, system what is the property of the column, right? So um, we do need a porosity unit, which is 0 0.40, as you can tell here, right? So it's 0 0.40. Actually, a, a column that is packed in lab we found that again and again the process, no matter how tidy you pi you pack it, it will typically around 0 0.38 to 0 0.42 or something. It's all almost for some reason it's always around these numbers. Um, okay, so that's your porosity, but also you need to tell the system um, how fast is your flow, how big is your permeability, and all that. So we need a uh, um, flow unit, which okay, which is a keyword block flow. Um, in the flow, you can tell what condition you have that are related to the flow of the system. So if we do flow again, the first thing we need to specify is distance. You can always specify different units in different keyword block. So could eventually translate anything. Um, together. But also here we also need time units. Let's do this with second. And then um, we are going to tell the system we are going to calculate. This is the keyword that you are going to use often later. Calculate flow. Um, you actually put in the true or false. If So there are several options to do um, to calculate flow. One is, for example, this to calculate flow. The other is to just specify constant flow. Let me just search for calculate flow. So you actually, if you put that true, it's a logical. If you put true, the system will, based on the permeability and the pressure gradient you give to the system, and then they calculate the flow velocity. If there's another um, keyword, it's called constant flow. If you specify constant flow, then you specify directly the x, y, z component of the Darcy flux. 
in the units of default will be meter cube per meter square per year. Now, so the difference between these two, um, and usually we, we prefer calculated flow, is that when you do a constant flow, you will not be able to update the flow if, for example, as it permit changes. So typically we do that for example, let's say you have a non-reactive column, the same column, actually in our system, it's okay to do constant flow. If you just want to specify the flow velocity there, you can actually put constant flow and put a specific constant does it for velocity. Um, when you do calculate flow, so let's say you have a reactive column, some mineral dissolving out or something precipitate that. So your process will keep on changing, your permeability will keep on changing, and with calculate flow, the system actually can update the flow field over time. So that means if you have, let's say, pore space open up, the flow velocity will become faster over time because of that. Um, in constant flow, once you specify constant flow, you can the flow is not going to, to change. It's always going to be that constant flow. So that's the advantage of doing calculated flow. Now, um, okay, so that's calculated flow. But in order to calculate flow, you need a few things. As I mentioned, we will need um, the parameters that you, you have for um, uh, Darcy's law. So here I'm going to specify permeability x and in the let's see in the question i'll give you 1.75 okay time 10 to minus. so you already have meters there so 1.75 e minus 13 that's your permeability you need to specify permit x or y or z when it's y and z is not specified the code knows you are not really interested in that direction you only have one um, good bug in that direction. It's by default. So you specify that as your permeability. So this permeability should have a unit of 1.75 e minus 13 meters squared because the distance unit is meters here. So your permeability, but you also need the, the um, pressure gradient. So you need to specify the pressure in the two boundaries. One is in the inlet end, the other is in the outlet end, right? So this will be, this is done by specified pressure. And then you always kind of set it as everywhere pressure is zero first, and this is by default. And then I'm going to say um, in One of the boundaries is going to be, is, so, so flow will be going from inlet to outlet. So, so it should be in the inlet you have higher pressure, right? So here we do, this is the number that we calculated in the previous step from question one to three. So you can go and look into the solution to see what is the number. So this is a pressure gradient we calculated. Um, so you specify the pressure in the inlet end, and you will need to specify why, where you have this pressure. And you will need to say zero, zero, and one, one. So this is specified, we call the ghost cell. Like, so the code has 100 grid blocks in the column. And then we call the one that just before grid, uh, grid block one, we call that zero. So you specify that grid block, um, the pressure is 2130 Pascal, and we fix it. Okay, we, we, we put the keyword fix, meaning it's fixed. And then you will specify the other side, our letter side, is um, pressure will be zero. I'd, again, and, but then you also need to specify what is a zone. And here we should have zone. And it's, it's in the ghost cell that is outside of the 100. So it's right after the 100 grid block. So you here, there you will specify it's 101 and then 1, 1. This is because this is one dimension. Later on, you will realize what you have, what, what you are going to do for two dimensions. Okay, so now you have 
the pressure in the inlet zone zero zero is two one three zero and then pressure in the outlet one zero one is grid block one zero one is zero. So essentially if you imagine you have the boundary because in numerical simulation you need boundary condition, you need another kind of break bar just before each boundary, right? So essentially you have a hundred plus the so zero grid block and 101 grid block. So you essentially have 102 grid blocks. All right, so that's the flow part to specify. Now with that, you should be able with NZ with this permeability, you should be able to calculate what is the flow velocity that is specified here. Um, because this pressure gradient is calculated based on this Darcy flow velocity. All right, and so that's flow, that's, that's porosity. You will also need, um, that's flow, so that's for the advective part, right? We also need to do, specify the transport part. Um, okay, let's just try to run it once so that um, we know there's nothing, no error in the system just to make sure. If we do, then we try to fix it. Okay, so this will be example. Okay, I wish we called it 6.1, I'll, I'll change that. One blank dot in. Okay. Number of, okay, no surface maximum by calling Error in opening database file. Okay, let's see what happened with the database file. Oh, okay. So the database file I specify here is data con dot dbs. And what I have here, I call it example 5.1. Let's change everything to 6.1 so it's consistent with the number there. Close uh, this window. And then you have the, this should be deleted because we're not going to use that anyway. And change this to 6.1. So in order to have consistent um, between the name of the database I provided here with that database in this folder, I should have example 6.1 as a database file. Because essentially this line is telling the code to look for um, this file data.com.dbs and then the code will be looking in this folder to, for that um, database and then it couldn't find it. So then it, it give us an error. So the database name should be consistent in here. Let's try it again. It's ex uh, example. Just make sure everything is 6.1 be blank dot in. Hmm, interesting. Let's Okay, so databases do not. Oh, okay, it's because I'm changing the name and then I have, I'm changing it here. And this name is still 5.1, so I'm changing. So in 6.1, it's probably still that. Okay, let me open it again with Okay, so this should be changed to example. Just copy it and paste. Okay, save it. And then I'm doing here again. Example 6.1 blank.
Okay, let's see. Huh, looks like there's something. Um, either it didn't like the format or. Let's look at the blank one. Okay, did it go through DBS? Specific, okay, speciation of geochem conditions. So it doesn't, at least it doesn't give us error. Prosity for this chemical condition. Okay, inlet. Inlet doesn't have pros meter, so it should be one. And then send zone prosity for this chemical condition. It should be point 0.4. Oh, um, yeah, okay. I know, I, I know what it is now. Because I changed it to 6.1 using the previous um, version of the input file. Okay, so I'm going to delete this one. Just make sure I have all everything in open. But I will put this to the okay. So, um, what happened is that we call this six point one, but I used the previous version that was not saved. So the code essentially have an empty one. So now I'm calling that six point one. Rename it to six point one. It has everything there. All right, so let's do it again. Example six point one blank dot in. Okay, no initial condition. So because we haven't put it in yet, um, a botting run. That's fine. So that's the the right stage we should be in. Okay, so open it again, and we'll continue on this. I just want to check kind of in the middle of when I'm doing this, make sure if I, if I have some errors, I'm going to fix, not wait until everything to last minute, because the more you put in this larger trends, you get, um, um, you could get uh, mistakes, and uh, I kind of don't want to wait everything to at the end, just make sure that in the intermediate uh, time I check um, and there's something, um, there's nothing wrong there. Okay, so here we have this uh, inlet sand zone. Our next step would be actually proxy that I should probably use, not just the rack, I should use the uh, keyword. Fixed porosity, 0 0.4, because this is the column, that's the send column, so it's not going to change porosity. So there's fixed porosity, there's also update porosity too, that you can actually update the porosity. You will, you will know, uh, we'll learn more about this later. So specify the porosity here, which is 0 0.4. Okay, and then we look at the transport, transport unit. Um, so we already, okay, let's look at the conditions. We're going to, what we're going to set as inlet condition, what we're going to set um, sense stone, right? So for the initial conditions, we're going to say, um, the sense zone, the sense zone will be given to Grid block one to a hundred. So what this means is that in grid block one to a hundred, it all has a um, condition of the sense sense zone which we specified here. So the name of here, it should be the same as the name here, right? So that's your initial condition in the within the column, and then in the boundary we are injecting, right? So the 
because this is a system that um, 1D and you actually have two boundaries, right? One is the inlet boundary, the outlet boundary. So you will be you are going to say x begin, which is the inlet. You'll be using inlet boundary, and then you'll be using flux. Every time we specify flux, that means the flow will be just coming. Um, it's not a fixed boundary. It's not something that we put it at constant. So x begin will be specified as the inlet boundary, and then you have the x. And we specify the outlet. And the outlet should be the same as a sand zone. We, because it's flow just coming out of sand zone, right? At the grid block 101, it goes cell. You will have the same condition just as if you are getting at the sand zone. So again, here we use a flex to make sure everything is smoothly coming out without jump and everything. Okay, so that's your initial condition and boundary condition we specify there. And then we can specify the transport properties. And we talk about transport property. We have several transport properties, diffusion, um, dispersion. Um, and for diffusion, you have diffusion coefficient. You also have cementation factor and all that. But first of all, let's specify again distance, right? You always specify distance units which is, let me call it this time, maybe centimeter. It's really specified with the convenience of whatever that's with the numbers. Distant units, you have centimeters. And let's also do time units, which is seconds. Um, because usually diffusion is given in units, either centimeter square per second or meter square per second. So I'm going to do s second there. And then um, I'm going to use fixed. I only have one species, it, should, it shouldn't really matter. But sometime um, if you have multiple species, you can put in the diffusion coefficient of specific species. Um, if you want to explore that, go into the menu and look up information. So let's say you have, for example, if you have seven or five different species in your system, if you want to specify the specific diffusion coefficient for hydrogen ion, for cesium, for OH minus, all these different species, you can that you found in, for example, in table one, they have all different uh, diffusion coefficients. You can do that by listing all the different species and then putting these numbers. So for fix for um, bromide, I'm going to say, as what is said in the question, diffusion coefficient is 1.8 times 10 to minus 9 meters square per second, which is here with, we have centimeter square. So it's 1.8 times minus 5 centimeter square per second. That uh, was in meter square per second in the 10 to minus 9. So this is centimeter square. It would be 1.8 times 10 to minus 5. Fix, and you also need fixed diffusion. You also need cementation. Exponent. Now, this cementation exponent is that value m. Like we talk about the calculated effective diffusion coefficient in plus media is phi m times d0, which is in the diffusion coefficient in water. So, that this cementation factor m is um, the cementation exponent. This is 1.0 here. It's I think, yeah, m is 1.0. So that's, that take care of the diffusion part. But then we also need to take, to have the dispersivity. Which is 0 0.07, as we specified in the question. Now, so we don't really need to explicitly calculate uh, mechanical dispersion and uh, hydrodynamic dispersion here. Um, 
the code, we actually be using that expression uh, and based on the number here to calculate all the diffusion, the dynamic dispersion term. Okay, so that's the transport unit. Now we also need to tell the code how often we want to sample. We, how often we want to see the snapshots of the of the column, right? We I talked about before that. Now here you have both time dimension and space dim dimension, so we can actually output um, both the breakthrough curves, which is at the end of columns, the concentration coming up and how that change in function of time, but also you can get snapshots of the what happened within the domain at different times. So this will be you will be specified in output. So let's do time units. And I'm going to specify in days. When I did the calculation um, for the resident time, it was around, resident time of, was about 0.1 days. So let's specify days. Now, and I'm going to put in time series. And the, I'm calling the breakthrough curves dot out. That's the name of the um, breakthrough. When, every time we call it breakthrough, it's the last, it's, it's a contrition. Actually, it's not necessary to be the last um, grid block. It's just here I'm specifying this is the last grid block. But if you want to look at the um, time evolution of a particular grid block, for example, um, let's say I'm trying to do this, I call it breakthrough curve 100. If I want to have another time series for another grid block, Let's say I'm trying to look at the middle of the column and see how, how this contrition change the middle column and how that's different from the afferent. You are going to do this. So this is the grid block you are looking. And this is a grid block you are looking, right? At the end of column, in the middle of column, and you call them different names. So at the output, you will have both of these breakthrough curves. And you will see, if you draw them together, you will see how different these are and you think about what's the process. So that's a time series. Um, for a particular location for the whole running domain, uh, running time. And then we are going to say, I'm going to get some spatial profiles, which is uh, concentration, for example, in the whole um, system at different times. These are snapshots. So let's say I'm starting from very close to the initial time and then I'm going to look at 0 0.05, which is almost, because the resident time is about 0 0.1, if I remember correctly. This is about half of the um, resident time. And then 0 0.11 is uh, about the resident time, and I, 0 0.11 days. And I also want to look at 0, 2, 2, which is, maybe I will call it uh, 0 0.16, which is 1.5 resident time. And this is 2 resident time. And then I will do 3 resident time. So that's the time. So this is very close to initial time, half resident time, 1 resident time, 1.5, 2, and then 3 resident time. Okay, so these are essentially games. So you should have, for example, all different countries or total countries you should have one, two, three, four, five, six. You should have six files for each type of uh, grid block, for each type of um, concentration output. Now I think we are ready to run, I believe. Let's just go and see.
example 6.1 blank so it's running okay so now you have all these so there's no mistakes surprising okay let's go let's look at the two breakthrough curves this is for the breakthrough curve for grid block 50 and this is the, the grid block for um says a breakthrough for grid block 100. i always try to name the files very explicitly so once you look at it, you know what is this it for um so this is it's because it's that to make it easier for you so this is a long file from very early on to very like the end of the time for 3.3 .3 days if you don't want it to be that frequent output you actually can change let's see screen output so in th you can change the screen output to make it output less frequently let's say if i put um uh every 30 so this is is how many time steps how many frequent in term time steps so this is output in the bricks of every 30 time steps before it was every 10 time steps um, if you rewind again, you are going to get a shorter um, you're going to get a, a smaller breakthrough curve. Not that it matters that much, but I just want to show you that if you are kind of thinking, okay, I did it too much. All right, let's look at it again. So you do have, if you notice, it does have the um, sh a shorter file compared to what it had before, right? Um, so it has the bricks, so this is time series at the grid cell 50, one, one. Um, and then the concentration, and then it's a log concentration, uh, we talk about that uh, in the output file. I'm sorry, the resin time is point about point 0.1 days. So half a resin, resin time, at the resin time, it should more or less, if you look at text files of the files, at resin time should give you about half of the inlet concentration if the code is running doing everything correct and in like countries in 1.4 1.2 time 10 to minus 4 so at about 0 0.1 day let's look for this you should get about half of the one point two okay um Either we did something calculation wrong or whatever at at a residence time one residence time you shouldn't have the whole breakthrough um this looks like you already breakthrough okay so at uh, one time or maybe I didn't remember the resident time correctly but in any case you um at uh, this time, at the end, you will reach to the inlet contrition. And early on, for example, half of that time, you should have half of the inlet contrition. Let's say 0 0.5 or something. 0 0.6, you would have half of the um, contrition from inlet. So in any case, uh, you can check later. I don't remember exact number, but uh, like we can check number. If the calculation is not correct, you can do it. Uh, you can change the numbers and everything. Okay, so that's the breakthrough curve. And then you have the concentration in early time. So that's uh, very close to initial time, right? Almost everything is in log unit, log 10 more per kilogram. Almost everything is in order of 10 to minus 10, right? So it's very close to initial condition. Except uh, probably the first several grid blocks, right? So you have um, 100 grid blocks. Right, so this is about um, 
ten percent of group box, you you start to have a contribution come in. All right, so this is points half of the residence time. So essentially, you have six file in each, um, and the total contribution. Every, every file you have that. Then check the flow velocity. This flow velocity is in the units of meter cube per meter square plus meter per year. And uh, actually, if when you do the calculation, you want to check this flow velocity file. This should be the, it's in a different unit, but you want to check the contribution of this. Uh, I'm sorry, is it the flow velocity of this with the velocity that I give to you in the question to make sure they are essentially the same. If not, then you will need to adjust your pressure gradient to get the number in the questions that I give to you, because otherwise then it's not consistent. You get what I mean. All right, so that's the philo uh, velocity. Speciations, these are not really, because you only have one bromide, so it doesn't really matter. Pressure, just make sure your pressure is okay. So that's gives you the pressure gradient. Pascals, 2, 1, 1, this is what we input in, essentially, um, for the whole system, right? To z uh, this is 10. Every group will give, we have 2,000. Two one three zero or something, right? So each group will have about twenty or something. So this is your pressure distribution essentially, based on Darcy's law. That's the anything else that I need to go through. I think that's it. So if you apply that bromide a country, you will see a breakthrough. Um, and then in the homework file, let me just quickly go through the homework. Okay, let's skip that. Let's not look at that. Um, in the homework file, what is interesting is I'm asking you to do another Tracer test. This test, the Tracer test we just did was, we did it for, um, like, so we always have one starting from time zero, we always have Tracer running. Here, we are going to have the Tracer, we injected tracer for just one tenth of the resident time. So it's only like a, a, a pulse essentially. And I'm going to ask you to product, which I think is interesting because you get to see the whole process of how things will be evolving. Um, I think the first question will be very interesting because they help you visually see the process. So let's say you inject a, a pulse of that and you plot a spatial profile of the tracer at one tenth of resin time, two tenths of resin time, four tenths of resin, eight tenths of resin time. And I ask you to plot all the spatial plot in one figure. So you will have maybe different color for each time, and you will see the evolution of the contrition uh, profile change at different time and it it'd be interesting trend and think about the trend and why it looked like that. And then second question is if you change the alpha when you have different flow velocities. This really should be six point one, sorry. If you change the dispersivity, how you will see the change in this evolution of the contrition profile? That's the first question. So it's essentially everything the same as, as in the example. But then we are just having a, a pulse one tenth of the injection. And you will be using the keyword block, key, the keyword restart. Because you, so you will be setting up look for the information about restart in menu. So you essentially will be inject, have this inlet contrition for 10% um, of the resin time, and then the rest you'll be injecting um, water. Okay, let me make that more explicit. clean water. 
into the column. Okay, and then the question is the second question I'm asking you, in, asking you to change a lot of parameter like flow velocity, dispersivity, molecular diffusion. You do a series of calculation and then answering questions about how things are going to change at different time, at different flow velocity, and then you, I'm also asking to, to calculate the packing number. Um, DE, DM, DH, and all these things, and make a table and look at how things are different at different conditions. This will give you some interesting comparison. It's a lot of repetitive work, but it, it will, at the end, give you some interesting insights about how the PE values would affect these uh, uh, transport processes. I might make this, uh, maybe I'll just mix if you have the energy to do it, do it. Otherwise, I think it's fine if you understand the first question well. Or maybe you just do the first question. Or maybe you'd pick to do maybe one question, one parameter for each. Um, so one point, like the middle one is always the same as what you already run in the example. So it's actually two more simulation for each of these questions. For, um, it's for two for this, two for this, two for this, and two for this. And then you essentially change, um, kind of summarizing a table. Okay, anyway, so I think we're done for this unit. Um, you, we can, uh, so you can explore a lot of things in the, in the homework and uh, if, if there's any kind of big thing that you think you don't understand, make sure you take notes and we'll cover these in the discussion. Let me know what is your biggest concerns are and everything. All right, have fun.